Hey everybody, this is Tim Hepworth here with Fly Fishing Board Rail Fitters and Thursday Night Live Fly Tying. I'm here to bring you another quick tie. Tonight, this is for season four, episode four, um, and we are gonna be tying the stone flopper. Nice little combination between a stone fly and a grasshopper. So, <clears throat> I'm gonna get you to go into your kits here, this guy here. If you don't have your season four kits, you can still head over to www.flyfishingbowriver.com backslash TNLS4, pick up your kits today. So if you go ahead, go into here, we're looking for this guy here. Season four, episode four. And the fly we're gonna be tying out of there tonight looks just like this. Or hopefully it's gonna look something like that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna tie this um, on a streamer hook, but a nice small one today. Let's, let's head over to the vise to take a look at it. What I'm gonna tie for thread tonight, I'm gonna be using a brown colored UTC 140. I like something a little bit thicker um, when working with foam. You don't wanna cut through your foam, so grab a thread that's a little thicker and appropriate in color. We're gonna go ahead and start our thread just behind the eye. We're gonna work this back about the point. We'll get that tag out of there. In your kits, you're gonna have a couple of sets of white legs. So you're gonna take one of your small pieces here. What I'm gonna do <clears throat> is I'm gonna fold it around my thread. I'm gonna even up the tips. Once I got them even, I'm gonna pull that straight up. And right about here at the point or near the barb, I'm gonna lay those down and start pulling some tight thread wraps right up on top. And then before I get to the back, I'm gonna grab both of them, splay them out. So if I take this from the side, it would look something like this. Splay them out so they're on either side. And then I'm gonna take some more thread wraps back and I'm gonna pin them to the sides of the fly, or sides of the hook, sorry. So when I'm done, it looks like that. They're splayed out nice and coming off the back. Once I got that, take a couple more thread wraps, secure them in place. Now what we're going to do tonight is we're tying on some white legs because it's nice and versatile. There's lots you can do with white. I'm going to take a green Sharpie just because I want to do something a little different. It's going to show up nice. And I'm just going to bar up those legs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the legs in my fingers and just roll them back and forth as I go up. And I can bar those legs right out to the end. Do the same thing on the other side. You can use any color. You could do purple, you could do black, you could do brown, whatever it is, you choose the color. Then I'm gonna go and trim these legs. So I want these legs to be about behind the fly, about the same overall length as the hook itself. So I'm gonna come back here roughly, trim those off, it'll look like that. All right. Good. Now from here, I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna grab this little bit of uh, floss leg that you have in brown. This is gonna be the rib we're gonna do or use coming up the fly. So go ahead, tie that in. You can tie it in right about in the middle of the fly again. Gonna cord up my thread, gonna give it that clockwise spin because I'm left-handed or counterclockwise if you are right-handed. Let's work that all the way back to where we left those legs. And then from here, guys, what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our dubbing. Okay, we're gonna make a pretty uh, plump little dubbing noodle here. So I'm gonna grab my thread, pull it up like so, remembering that I gotta move my fingers in one direction like this, not going back and forth when making that noodle. I'm gonna come in here on the thread. We're gonna make about a four, ah, three to four inch noodle. Probably won't use that much, but it'll give you a little extra in case you need it. So we wanna put a, quite a bit of dubbing on because this is what's gonna create the bulk on the underside of the fly. So I'm gonna keep making that, pulling it tight, work my way down a little bit. You can always add some more if you didn't put enough in once you start wrapping it. I'm going to start with that. So I'm going to come in right here, cover up my thread wraps, start making some nice wraps going forward. really want to maintain a pretty consistent underbody going up. <clears throat> now we're going to go up about two thirds of the way up the hook. We want to leave a little bit of space there. So I've got a little bit too much, which I'll pull some of that off, thread that up, cord it up. I'm gonna leave that just like that, okay? Now what I'm gonna do right away here is I'm gonna grab that rib and I'm gonna start making some open spirals up that dubbing. Try to keep those evenly spaced out. You can kind of pull that floss tight and it flattens it out a little bit. Move that forward. Take a couple thread wraps in front of it, behind it, and repeat. And go ahead and get that out. Now what I actually like to do is I like to go in here um, again with a Velcro tool and I'm gonna pull out a little bit of this dubbing. So I'm gonna take a half hitch just to get my thread out of the way. 
Now I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna pull a little bit of that dubbing out. I'm gonna rough up the bottom just a little bit. And kind of pull some of that down. You can flip it up. You just want to create a, the illusion of some legs on the bottom or just a little bit of bulkier, bulkier body. And have some of that stuff is going to be a little bit moving and current and whatnot underneath the fly. We just want it to look a little bit more buggy. So we're just going to comb it out just a little bit. Okay, I'm going to bring my thread back to here. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to head over to the, the foam you have in there. You got a pretty good strip in your package. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a piece and cut it. So we want to cut it about the width of your hook gap. So if you came in here and measured on your hook gap, I just got to take off a little bit of this guy. And I want it to be about the length of the hook is what I'm gonna need to be using this piece for. So I'll trim that piece out. So I got a piece like that's a little oversized, but that's okay. And then when I come down to the, to the end of it, like so, I'm just gonna trim it into a bit of a triangle point at the end. Looks something like that. Okay. Now I wanna lay that down right here and I want it to hang out just beyond the bend of the hook. Okay, so it's just out a little bit. Certainly not way out here by the back of the legs, but you kind of just pick a space in between those two. And we'll lay it down like that, right on top of the hook. Take a gathering wrap, cinch it down so it doesn't move, like so. You can kind of turn it. You could put a little super glue on top of there if you like, but it, this shouldn't move on us. It's basically creating that, <clears throat> that body appearance. Keep it pushed down. Now we're gonna come in here and trim this foam out. And then we're gonna take some thread wraps and really get it cinched in, cover up that stuff. I'm gonna work it back just a little. I want a little bit more space because we still gotta put our bullet head on this guy. Gonna do that. Now in your kit, you got some crystal flash. Looks like so, okay? I want you to take a, a full strand of it. You can take that strand, fold it in half, and you're just gonna cut it at the halfway point. I can get a hold of it. Cut it at the halfway point, and then we're gonna use one full half for each, each fly, because you can tie two of these out of your package. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that piece that I cut, and I'm gonna fold it in half, trim it, and then I'm gonna tie it in and fold it over one more time. So I got two, two strands basically that I'm tying in here. Now tie it in right in front of that foam, kind of hanging off the back. Take those other two pieces and fold them back over and tie them in as well. So they're sitting like so. And now I'm gonna trim them off right at the back of the foam. Okay. The deer hair we're gonna put in next is actually gonna hold that stuff down and out of the way a bit. So you're gonna take some of that blonde deer hair that's in your kit, like so. Take about half of it. We're gonna stack it in a hair stacker. So if you've got one like mine, you're using the fancy shore, shore fishing stacker. Let's hair stacker, let's go ahead and get the hair in there. You don't need a ton of hair here, guys, but after you stack it, you do end up pulling out, pulling out some of it. And you know, you want to pull the bottom off, orienting those tips back towards the rear of the fly. Go ahead and grab that out. Pull out any of those under hair that's in there and that fluff, because we don't want to use that. Now, as we go to tie this in, we want to keep those tips as even as possible. I like to go in there and pick out any pieces that are kind of just out on their own, doing their own thing. Organize it in your fingers. Now I'm gonna lay that so that, that, that those tips extend to right about the back of the foam again. Now when I do this, I'm gonna switch hands. Now the problem here is if I take one wrap here and I pull really tight, all that hair is gonna flare up and it's actually gonna cause it to stand straight up, which I don't want. I want it to lay down and have the appearance of a wing. So I'm gonna take some thread wraps here, but not super tight. Then I'm gonna advance my thread forward a few times. And once I get down here, then I'm gonna cinch tight, okay? And I'm gonna work my thread back up almost like a dam but not really pulling tight. Just putting pressure, and that'll keep it from flaring so it's standing straight up. That just flares back, okay? Now I need to go in here and trim out all the butts because we're not gonna use those. Being very careful not to trim your thread because that's not awesome. Get that stuff out like that. We're gonna cover up all those pieces, okay? Getting pretty close to done here, guys. We're gonna go ahead and put in our last piece of foam so we're gonna go back to that foam we had before, and this time we're gonna cut um, a piece that's a l basically the width or a little bit wider than the hook gap. And so this is pretty much already there. It's a little bit oblong shape, so I'm gonna trim out a little bit of it. And basically we're gonna tie some foam in on the bottom and the top, and that's gonna what we're gonna create our bullet head out of. 
but it looks something like this. I'm gonna go just a little bit thinner. And then I'm gonna cut that in half so I got two pieces to work with. And then what I like to do before I tie it in is I come in and just cut just the very corners off. It gives my thread something to kind of bite into when I tie it in on that point. So I'm gonna start by tying this top one in and I can kind of push this back, even almost back to um, back against the hair, maybe not quite, just to make sure I really get it locked in because we can put lots of pressure wraps down to hold it there. Once I get that in there, it can be a little awkward because you're tying in the, almost in the wrong direction. You're tying towards the front of the fly there, but just kind of see what you can do. And I want to take thread wraps down so this is cinched all the way down right to the eye. So I keep flipping that up, making sure that's right at the eye because it's where our bullet head is going to be created. Okay. I'm gonna flip it upside down. I'm gonna do the same thing with the other piece. So I'm gonna come in here and trim out my corners. Just gonna lay that right there. Get it tied in. Take some thread wraps forward and match it up with the other one. Bind all that foam down. Make sure it's kind of twisted so they're both staying one on top, one on the bottom. Once I got those thread wraps down, I flip this back up and I'm gonna take my thread back to just below the hair. Okay, and I'm gonna pull this back. Keep it nice and flat, making sure I'm right back against that hair with my thread. This is where my bullet's created. A few wraps so it stays where it's supposed to. I'm gonna fold this other guy back, do the same thing. See my bullet head's created quite nicely there. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trim this out. So I'm gonna kind of come in here and tug on it a little bit. Trim. Same thing on the bottom. Come in here nice and close as I can and trim. Okay, still got that little bit of dubbing coming through there. Now I'm gonna come and clean this up just a smidge so I can get that probably a little closer or at least soften out the edges. Like so, if you've got any deer hair that's kind of just doing its own thing, try to fix that. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to that other half of those legs that I had. I'm gonna tie one in on one side. A couple thread wraps. This looks like so. I'm gonna come to the other one, do the same thing. I'm gonna tie it in on the far side of the fly making sure that they're nice and kind of right in the center on the, on the side profile, they're kind of centered. Now what I'm gonna do is the last thing we're gonna tie in is we're gonna tie in a little bit of cider foam. So this is just yellow foam. I'm gonna take a little strip of it. Looks something like that. Now I don't wanna tie a bunch in hanging off the front of the fly, so I'm gonna just tie it in basically right with just a little tip poking through. So it looks like that, and then I'm gonna take this post however long I want it so it to be visible. I trim it off so it stands up nice so I can see it. And let's go ahead and whip finish this fly right here. We're gonna bar up those legs and we're gonna be done. Come in here. Just like so, one more time. Got that there. The last thing I'm going to do is bar up the legs just like I did on the other side, or in the rear, sorry. Make sure all my body material is where I want it to be. And I come in here with my Sharpie. Bar up my legs. I do it to all four. It's just really nice to break up the legs, gives them a little bit more of a realistic appearance. If we bar them up nice, it doesn't have to be an exact science, it just breaks it up a bit. Grab that last one. Bar that one up. Now I'm gonna trim these out so that these back legs end at the back of the fly. And these front ones, I just want them to come out eh, roughly half of the overall hook length. Not an exact science, but you'll figure it out. And there we go guys, there is our stone flopper. Great little combination between a grasshopper and a stone fly. Definitely keep a bunch of these in your box in different colors, give them a try.
Again, guys, this has been Tim Hepworth with Fly Fishing Board for Outfitters and Thursday Night Live. This has been a quick tie. We can't wait to see you again. And don't forget, smallest act of kindness can make a difference in someone's life. See you next time.